Okay, welcome everybody to today's class. Um, I hope that everything is okay with the board. I hope it's not reversed. I remember having a, a strange problem a long time ago where the, the board was reversed. Now I want to talk about something quite complicated today. So I hope that there are no more problems with the connection because I have had a few connection problems recently and that's why I've deleted videos um, it's just because they haven't worked. Uh, the, the connections dropped and then unfortunately the, the video's been a waste of time. <laughs> and so, uh, hi Lolly Lolly, nice to see you here. Um, let me just quickly turn off the screen. I think that will make the light on the board a little bit better. Now I want to talk today about conjunctive adverbs, which are one part of speech and they're adverbs, they are not conjunctions and another part of speech, which is subordinating conjunctions. And these are very different parts of speech. So today we're going to start with what I've written here at the bottom of the board. Um, and it's because it's very important. How do you know if a word is a subordinating conjunction? And how do you know if a word is a conjunctive adverb? Because they are similar. Now in the last lesson, we looked at the difference between fanboys coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. And we learn that subordinating conjunctions, when they start subordinate clauses, you can always swap the clauses round. You can start with a subordinate clause, then have the main clause, or you can start with the main clause and then have the subclause. And that's very important. That's something subordinating conjunctions can do. Conjunctive adverbs, and I've got some examples down here at the bottom. Conjunctive adverbs are words like therefore, furthermore, in fact, moreover, additionally, firstly, besides, nevertheless, however. All of these words are conjunctive adverbs. And what you'll notice about these words is that you can't reverse when they're joining together two clauses. You can't reverse them. Yeah. If you've got a subordinating conjunction, you can reverse the clauses. If you've got a conjunctive adverb, you can't reverse the clauses. So what do I mean? I just want to make this point really clear because this is the main point I'm making today, really, which is that you can reverse the sub and main clause with these words. So if we take any one of these words, even though, yeah, I can say, even though it is hot, I don't want to go outside. Or I can say, I don't want to go outside, even though it is hot. What about the next word? Because I can say, because it is hot, I don't want to go outside. Or I can say, I don't want to go outside because it is hot. So this is what you can do with subordinating conjunctions. You can swap the main and sub clauses round. As it was raining, um, I came home on the bus. I came home on the bus as it was raining. If I win one million pounds, I will buy a yacht. If I uh, buy a yacht, uh, sorry, I will buy a yacht if I win one million pounds. So you can do that with the subordinating conjunctions, but you can't do it with the conjunctive adverbs. Let's try, let's try with a concrete example. So if I say something like, I will get paid on Friday, therefore I will pay you back after the weekend. You couldn't possibly say, therefore I will pay you back after the weekend. I will get paid on Friday. Can you see how they're just totally, they must be in the order that they're in. They can't be reversed in terms of order. Subordinating conjunctions can. Okay, very important distinction. We're trying to see how they function differently. Why have they got different names? Why do grammarians give them different names? It's because they work very differently. Second difference between these words, the subordinating conjunctions, and these words, the conjunctive adverbs, is that subordinating conjunctions can't move within the subordinate clause. Now, what I mean is, if you say, even though it is hot, you can't say it is hot even though. You can't say it even though is hot. You can't do that. You can't move it in the subordinate clause. Same with because. If you say because it is hot, you can't say it is hot because. You can't say it because is hot. You can't do it. The same with all of these other subordinating conjunctions. If you want to say when I get paid, I will pay you back. I will pay you back when I get paid. You can't say I when get paid or I get paid when. You can't move the subordinating conjunction. What about conjunctive adverbs? These guys definitely can move in the clause. 
let's have a look. If we say something like, I'm gonna get paid on Friday, therefore I will pay you back at the end of the week. What you'll notice is you can say, therefore I will pay you back at the end of the week. I therefore will pay you back at the end of the week. I will therefore pay you back at the end of the week. I will pay you back at the end of the week, therefore. Can you see how therefore is totally mobile within the clause? It's totally free to move anywhere that it wants to. It's not the same for the subordinating conjunctions. They are always fixed right at the start of the subordinate clause before the subject and the verb. So I wanted to point out those differences Firstly, just to try to show you that grammarians don't use words like preposition, conjunction, determiner, subordinating conjunction without good reason. They're using these terms to show you that these are words that work in different ways. And this is important because different words need different punctuation. And also different words, well, some can be moved in the clause and some can't. So this is very important. We need to know what we're dealing with. Now, I wanted to show you some confusing words now, otherwise and however. Otherwise is particularly confusing. But uh, however is confusing too. So what, why is it confusing? Well, because firstly, however does function as a coordinate, as a subordinating conjunction. Yeah, and let's have a look at it functioning as a subordinating conjunction. Here it is. However, plus clause, yeah, you look at it is a clause, subject and verb. However you look at it, I failed. Now, this is a subordinating conjunction and we can prove it now. We've got the information here to prove that this is a subordinating conjunction. Try moving it in the clause. Can we move it in the clause? No way. We can't move that in the clause. We can't say you however look at it or you look however at it or you look at it however. You can't move it in the clause, but you can swap the two clauses round. You can say, I failed, however you look at it. So it's passing all the tests that make it a subordinating conjunction. However, can also be an adverb, not a conjunctive adverb. We're gonna deal with that. Conjunctive adverbs join clauses together. Ordinary adverbs just modify an adverb or an adjective or another adverb or an entire clause. Now this one's modifying fast, however fast he runs. It's describing the word fast, so it's an ordinary adverb. Okay, so that's another way however can be used. But there is a third way however can be used, and that's a conjunctive adverb. And when it's a conjunctive adverb, you use a semicolon or a full stop to split apart the two main clauses Otherwise, you've got a comma splice. So this is why this grammar is important. So I think this is true. Semicolon, however many disagree. And what we'll see is that that, however, can be moved anywhere. You can say, I think this is true. Many disagree, however. Yeah, many, however, disagree. That, however, is really mobile. And that's telling you it's a conjunctive adverb. It can move within the clause. And can we reverse the two? However many disagree, I think this is true. Um, well, there is a way of doing it, but it changes the meaning. We can't use it as a conjunctive adverb. If you say, however many disagree, then it's starting to become like this, however, however many, it doesn't matter how many disagree. And that's a different meaning, that's this, however. So then it's becoming an adverb that just modifies many. You have a, uh, an adjective, however many disagree. Okay, uh, so that's slightly different. But you can see that this, however, is a conjunctive adverb, okay? Um, because it can move in the clause and because we can't reverse the two clauses. Now I wanna look at the word otherwise, because in my opinion, the dictionaries are frequently or often mispunctuating this word. They're treating it as though it were a subordinating conjunction. But I wanna to prove to you that otherwise is not a subordinating conjunction. Now, of course, I went to three different dictionaries to see what they said. What kind of word is otherwise? Well, Oxford said that it's an adverb and they didn't give any other functions, not that I could find, maybe I missed it. Miriam Webster said that it's an adverb, um, which I agree with, by the way, I think it is an adverb. Uh, Cambridge said that it's a subordinating conjunction firstly, and then they say it's an adverb, so they give it two different roles. But are they correct? 
in calling it a subordinating conjunction. Is it similar to any of these words down here? Even though because as if to all of its brothers and sisters, if it's a subordinating conjunction. And I'm going to argue, no way. It's not a subordinating conjunction. And my reasons are right here. Subordinating conjunctions can't move in the clause that they're in. So if we say something like this, we have to hurry. Otherwise, we won't get there on time. What you'll notice is we can say we have to worry. We won't get there on time otherwise. You, the otherwise is mobile. You can put it anywhere you like. Just like therefore, furthermore, in fact, moreover just like all the other conjunctive adverbs. You can move it. We otherwise won't get there on time. We won't otherwise get there on time. It's very mobile. So it's a conjunctive adverb. That's what that's showing us. Also, we can't swap around the clauses. If you say we have to hurry, otherwise we won't get there on time, you couldn't possibly say, otherwise we won't get there on time. We have to hurry. Yeah, you couldn't swap them round. It changes the logic. It changes the meaning. And so this otherwise is functioning as a conjunctive adverb. It is not functioning as a subordinating conjunction. However, it is often punctuated as though it were a subordinating conjunction. Now, Oxford and Miriam Webster, but they give the following examples. They say that she said the mayor needed to sign the contract, comma, splice otherwise the money would be returned. Now, I'm teaching comma splices at the moment, and this is why it's important to me. Yeah, it's important to me to know, is that a comma splice or not? Now, I'm arguing that it is, because I'm arguing that otherwise is not a subordinating conjunction. It's a conjunctive adverb, which means that like other conjunctive adverbs, therefore, nevertheless, you can't put these words between two main clauses and just have a comma there, because that would be a comma splice. And so I consider this and this and this, they are comma splices, but they're comma splices that I've found in the dictionary. Now, of course, I'm sure you're all thinking, Dave, you must be wrong. The dic free dictionaries can't be wrong. And I know what you mean, but you have to prove it to me. Because for me, grammar is not something that you just make up arbitrarily. You don't just say, oh, it's a conjunctive, ad or it's, it's punctuated with a comma often, so let's just call it a subordinating conjunction and be done with it. It's not like that. It's either a subordinating conjunction or a conjunctive adverb, and we can see which one it is by doing logical tests that show that it's functioning in one way or functioning in another way. Now, I've just shown you that this word is functioning in each case as an adverb and not as a conjunction. You couldn't swap round the clauses, okay? You couldn't do that. And, you and this word is mobile in the sentence. Subordinating conjunctions aren't mobile in the sentence. They can't be moved around within that clause. These ones can. We can say, she said the mayor needed to sign the contract. The money wouldn't be returned otherwise, or the money would be returned otherwise whichever way you want to do it. But you could put the otherwise at the end. The money otherwise would be returned. The money would otherwise be returned. That's showing you that it's an adverb. It's not a conjunction. OK, so these three sentences that I took from Oxford, Cambridge and Miriam Webster, I consider them wrong. OK, I consider them wrong and I consider them wrong because otherwise is not a subordinating conjunction. If it were a subordinating conjunction, they would be correct. Um, because it would be a contrasting subordinate clause, so you'd have a comma before it, just like you have a comma before although and though, even when they're in the second position. They usually have a comma there because they're contrasting subordinating conjunctions. And so if it were a subordinating conjunction, I'd say those three were correct, but it's not. And unless somebody can prove to me that it is, and they'd have to have a pretty good argument, because I can't see how, how this is incorrect, um, you have to prove to me that it's not that kind of word, that it's not one of, uh, sorry, that it's not a conjunctive adverb and that it is actually a subordinating conjunction. But only one dictionary is making that claim and that's Cambridge. And we spoke in the last lesson about a mistake they made with subordinating and coordinating conjunction. In my opinion, this is another mistake. And um, it's, it's a mistake because of the way otherwise functions. And so this is important for making sure we don't splice. 
Um, otherwise, if it's between two main clauses, it does need a semicolon. And of course, you do find it in dictionaries referred to as conjunctive adverb and punctuated as a conjunctive adverb. What, what I find rather strange is that it's often punctuated as if it were a subordinating conjunction. And if you check the other conjunctive adverbs, like therefore, furthermore, nevertheless, moreover, check those, check those words in the dictionary, and you will see that the dictionaries are much more careful with the other conjunctive adverbs, and they don't splice their main clauses together with a conjunctive adverb in between. They're very careful and they use semicolons and full stops. So if they're careful with the brothers and sisters of otherwise, if they're careful with all the other conjunctive adverbs, why aren't they careful with otherwise? And I don't know, I have no idea. But here you can see it punctuated like a conjunctive adverb. I need to pay the fine now, semicolon, otherwise the fine will be doubled, yeah? And this comma after the conjunctive adverb, it's kind of optional because sentence adverbs, which is what it's doing, it's modifying this sentence here. They, uh, that comma is optional really, it's not obligatory, but a lot of the time people do choose to comma off their adverbs, their sentence adverbs. Okay, so you could have, I need to pay the fine now, semicolon, otherwise the fine will be doubled. And tickets purchased in advance without a discount, semicolon, otherwise, comma, tickets are full price. They're both from the dictionary, so the dictionaries do understand that it does function as a conjunctive adverb, but um, I find it odd that they're claiming it's a subordinating conjunction or can be used, can be punctuated as if it were a subordinating conjunction. But please, I wanna hear your ideas about this. If anybody out there has some information about otherwise or about how it's being mispunctuated or maybe you have an argument that it's not, maybe you have an argument that it is a subordinating conjunction, please put it under the video. I'll be very interested in any points that you have to make to argue that it is a subordinating conjunction. But um, yeah, I can't see any reason for calling it that at the moment. In, all I can see is uh, are a, num a number of very good reasons for calling it a conjunctive adverb. Now, do remember that otherwise does have other functions. It can be a simple adverb, just like, other, just like however could be a simple adverb. If you say something like this, many people claim that, but I think otherwise, then otherwise is modifying the verb think, and so it's just a simple adverb. And otherwise can be an adjective as well. The otherwise, um, it can describe a noun sometimes. I can't think of an example at the moment, and I'm sure I'm gonna fail, so I won't bother. But I just wanted to mention that it does have, have other functions as well, so we mustn't get it mixed up with its other functions. Okay? Um, so thanks for watching today's class. If that's been interesting for you, I'm really happy. And uh, I hope it helps you to separate different parts of speech into different groups. You see, sometimes, um, I think that grammar is very similar to chemistry. I really do. I think that putting, putting words into different groups is, is very similar to putting different elements into different groups on the periodic table. You're looking at the function and you're looking at how they differ. And it, you're not just putting them in different groups willy-nilly for the hell of it, you know, without any kind of criteria. There are certain criteria you're using for putting, them, for putting them into different groups, just like the chemist is using certain criteria for putting them into different functional groups. Okay, so thanks everybody for watching and I hope to see you all soon.